I think the most important point is you're replacing an entire aircraft with a carbon fiber ring. That is a mind-blowing statement. All of its complexity, its training, its sustainment is just a circle. That's nuts. The hybrid quad rotor is essentially two full-blown, complicated aircraft glued together. One aircraft always carries the dead weight of the other, and each aircraft brings with it many failure modes, training requirements, and sustainment needs. What if you could replace one of these aircraft and all of the complexity that it embodies with a simple, maintenance-free, passive structure? And what if this same structure not only radically simplified the aircraft, but eliminated all of the performance limits inherent to the hybrid architecture? The duct improves thrust by 85% compared to an open propeller. It's this brilliant insight that the structure not only makes it capable of taking off and landing uh, without a quadcopter strapped to it, it makes it a better plane in forward flight. A duct allows the propeller to continue to do work efficiently as airspeed increases, which is why one of the many reasons why you see ducted fans on kind of any major jetliner so they can fly fast and efficiently. The VBAT went on to provide you know, over 4,000 hours of COCO flight on the, the VBAT 118. The fact that it takes off and lands without uh, an electric propulsion system, which means you don't have to bring around a ton of generators, spare batteries, and additionally, when you're on these you know, forward areas, you don't necessarily have access to climate control. And lithium-ion batteries have significant issues at high temperatures and have huge issues at very low temperatures. VBAT doesn't require any of that. A standard operating procedure for many hybrid quad rotors is to cordon off a portion of runway or lay down a large section of AM2 matting. A 100-foot diameter safety ring is established and HESCO barriers are positioned at the perimeter so crews can take protective cover when wind gusts produce catastrophic failure. The VBAT, on the other hand, because of its ducted fan and precision landing capability, is an inherently safer aircraft and therefore it can launch from crowded flight decks, small forest clearings, and dense urban environments. A fundamental architectural constraint of hybrid quadcopters makes them extremely vulnerable to crashes during takeoff and landing. Quads maneuver side to side and front to back by rolling and pitching. This method of maneuver works well until wings are introduced. When the hybrid rolls and pitches, the wind gets atop or under the wings and produces huge forces that can overwhelm the propulsion system, destabilize, and crash the plane. By contrast, VBAT's vectored thrust system can apply maximum translation and gust rejection forces in a way that is largely decoupled from its wing and body orientation. This makes the system resilient in challenging wind conditions during takeoff and landing. We bought the VBAT to put our AI pilot Hivemind on board. The simple, elegant architecture of the VBAT lends itself to straightforward integration of Hivemind. We will introduce swarming, GPS denied maneuver, and comms denied maneuver onto VBAT. And I don't know of another platform or hybrid quadcopter backed by the bench of AI talent required to make this happen. The VBAT represents the most simple, highest performing economic approach to VTOL aviation and the Group 3 space.